Diamond and Pearl is a really popular and one of the most beloved Pokemon series. It's the 10th season in the long-running Pokemon franchise, and in this one, we get to explore the Sinnoh region. Ash, our main character, is joined by two new friends, Don and Brock. Don is a Pokemon coordinator aiming to become a top coordinator in Brock, well, he's the Brock we all know. Not only does it have one of the best character development of Ash, but also the best movies of possibly the entire franchise. Since we are picking Pokemon Diamond and Pearl from the middle of the long franchise, I think it's best if we set minimal context from the first season. Our protagonist, Ash Ketchum, sets out on his Pokemon journey in the Kanto region. Accompanied by his friends Misty and Brock, Ash aims to become a Pokemon master by collecting gym bags and competing in the Pokemon League. This series introduces viewers to the basics of the Pokemon world, including the concept of Pokemon training, battling, and the different gym leaders that Ash must defeat to earn gym badges. The Kanto region is home to the original 151 Pokemon, and during Ash's journey, he encounters iconic Pokemon like everyone's favorite Pikachu, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle. The main antagonist throughout this season is the villainous Team Rocket composed of Jesse, James, and Meowth who constantly attempt to steal rare and powerful Pokemon. However, their success rate is questionable to say the least. Also, this video is going to be quite long, so I'm gonna try to skip all the fillers and less important episodes. Now that you understand the basic setting of the Pokemon franchise, let's dive deep into the world of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. In the Sinnoh region, a new Pokemon trainer named Dawn starts her journey. After a bit of chaos, Dawn officially picks Piplup as her partner. At the same time, Ash arrives in Sinnoh with Pikachu and Apom. But Team Rocket shows up and manages to grab Pikachu. During their argument, everyone gets sent flying, including Pikachu. Now, separated from his favorite Pokemon, Ash has to figure out how to find Pikachu in this new region full of exciting adventures and surprises. While trying to catch a Pokemon, Don finds a Pikachu in trouble. Team Rocket's Viper, Cacnea, and Dustox are ambushing it. Don bravely defends Pikachu, and a battle with Team Rocket ensues. Despite her best efforts, Pikachu doesn't respond to Pokeballs, and Don figures out that he belongs to someone else. At the same time, Ash and Brock learn about Don's encounter with Pikachu. They follow the trail with Starly, hoping to reunite Ash with his beloved Pikachu. Ash and Brock come across a mysterious trainer named Paul who challenges Ash to a battle. However, Paul leaves when Ash admits he doesn't have enough Pokemon for a full battle without Pikachu. Meanwhile, in the forest, Team Rocket grabs Pikachu again despite Dawn and her Piplup trying their best to stop them. Ash shows up just in time to foil the villain's plans, allowing all our heroes to finally meet. They head to the Pokemon Center where they meet Professor Rowan who introduces them to Paul. Eager for a rematch, Ash battles Paul, and even though it's a draw, there's tension due to Paul's blunt attitude, and this rivalry has only just begun. Dawn has a tough time catching her first wild Pokemon, leading to some frustration between her and Ash. Nando, a Pokemon bard, cheers everyone up with his Badoo's sunny day. Dawn challenges Nando to a contest battle, but Badoo ends up defeating Piplup. When they learn that Nandu is unsure about whether to focus on contests or gym battles, Ash and Don decide to help him find his path. Team Rocket shows up, but Nando comes to the rescue. In thanks, Ash battles Nando and Pikachu wins. Inspired by the experience, Nando decides to pursue both contests and gym battles. Once again, Team Rocket snatches Pikachu, but a Turtwig sees it happen and frees Pikachu from the cage, becoming friends with him. The group then meets an older woman named Clara, who tells them that Turtwig helps everyone in the forest. After defeating Team Rocket, Turtwig shows affection towards Ash. Following a battle, Ash successfully catches Turtwig, adding a new member to the team as they continue their journey to Jubilife City. Paul returns and calls Turtwig weak, leading to a battle challenge. Team Rocket tries to cause trouble again but fails. Later, Turtwig goes up against Chimchar but loses. Even though Turtwig doesn't win, Ash promises to get stronger and beat Paul the next time they meet. Nothing much happens in the next two episodes. The heroes meet trainer Minnie heading to Power Zone Gym and Brock captures Krogunk, who displays affection by poison jabbing him. Toxic love, I guess. One day, Don wakes up with messy hair and asks Piplup for help to fix it using Bubble Beam. Meanwhile, Team Rocket sets their sights on Baneri, who has a crush on Pikachu after seeing his agility. Ash and Don both try to catch Baneri, but Team Rocket shows up and kidnaps the smitten Baneri. Pikachu and the heroes face off against Team Rocket in a battle to rescue Baneri. In the end, Don manages to capture Baneri, and she joins Don's team. Don, Ash, and Brock explore Jubilife City, with Don excited about getting a Pokech. 
However, they run into Team Rocket who's dressed up as clowns handing out fake Poketches. Fortunately, a local boy named Landis sees through their trick. After defeating Team Rocket, Don receives a genuine Poketch and sets her sights on winning the Jubilife City Contest. During practice for the Jubilife City Contest, Don suggests a friendly contest to Ash, and he agrees to join with Apom. They sign up and Don impresses everyone by using seals and a ball capsule creatively. Meanwhile, Jesse competes as Jessalina and James and Meowth try to sell fake seals. Don makes a new friend, Zoe, who is just as excited about the competition as her. In the contest, Zoe does well with Miss Drevis and Don's Piplop amazes the audience with a cool bubble beam and peck combo. The Pokemon contest in Jubilife City moves forward and Zoe wins a close battle against Ash. Next up, Don and Zoe are set to battle each other. The match is intense with Glammeow and Baneri showing off their moves. In the end, Zoe comes out on top. Even though Don loses, she stays determined and gets support from her mom, who advises her to focus on future contests and back her friends. In the final face-off, Jesse competes against Zoe, but Glammeow's smart moves and strong attacks lead Zoe to victory, earning her the Jubilife City Ribbon. As Zoe leaves, Don thanks her and expresses her determination to get better as a coordinator. One day, Ash's Starly hurts its leg while practicing Aerial Ace. They meet Rosebay, who shares that bird Pokemon are vanishing from the forest. Investigating, they discover Team Rocket capturing migrating Pokemon. Starly gets caught, so Ash, Don, Brock, and Rosebay team up to rescue it and other trapped Pokemon. Amid the battle, Starly evolves into Staravia and uses Aerial Ace to send Team Rocket blasting off. With the bird Pokemon freed, Rosebay thanks Staravia and decides to stay with the Pokemon. Meanwhile, the group continues their journey together. While on their way to Orberg City, the group encounters a scared Nuzleaf who got separated from its group. Thanks to Brock's skills as a Pokemon breeder, he successfully calms and befriends the frightened Nuzleaf. However, Team Rocket decides to capture Nuzleaf, hoping to use its musical talents for their boss. Despite Team Rocket's initial success, the heroes intervene, leading to an unexpected evolution. Brock's Bonsai evolves into Pseudo Wudo. Pseudo Wudo displays its newfound strength by defeating Team Rocket's Pokemon. With Nuzleaf safely reunited with its group, the heroes continue their journey towards Orberg City. In Orberg City, Ash is excited to challenge Rourke, the rock-type gym leader, for his first Sinnoh badge. Paul also arrives and earns the right to challenge the gym leader. Paul swiftly defeats Rourke's Geodude and Elekid, securing the coal badge. Ash is then ready to take on Rourke, displaying Chimchar's improved strength. Ash also invites Paul to stay and watch his battle, setting the stage for an intense showdown at Orberg Gym. The battle between Rourke and Ash continues at the Orberg Gym, and let's just say Ash didn't stand a chance. Unimpressed, Paul leaves the gym, labeling the battle as pathetic. After Ash's defeat at the Orberg Gym, he steps up his training with Apom, Turtwig, and Pikachu. Meanwhile, Team Rocket steals a fossil revival machine and releases an Aerodactyl that causes chaos in Orberg City. Rorik, Ash, and Brock team up to face the rampaging fossil Pokemon. Following a series of events, Don and her Pokemon come to the rescue, capturing the Aerodactyl and restoring peace. Ash and Rorik decide on a rematch, and Don offers to assist Ash in his ongoing training. In the second battle at the Orberg Gym, Ash shows he's more confident and clever. After a tough fight, Turtwig wins, and Ash gets the Coal Badge. Team Rocket tries to mess things up, but Croagunk stops them. Rorok sees Ash has improved and gives him his first Sinnoh badge. It's a big win for Ash on his journey. Don really likes a Pachirisu and tries to catch it, but Pachirisu is quick and uses electric moves to resist. Team Rocket hears Jesse's plan to win a ribbon at the Floroma Town Contest and decides to catch Pachirisu for her. Pachirisu plays around with Don's Pokemon and Pikachu, but escapes. Team Rocket tries to catch Pachirisu, and even though Don lets it go, they still trap both her and and Pachirisu for a while. In a surprising turn, Pachirisu picks Don over Team Rocket. Although Team Rocket briefly catches Pachirisu, it decides to go back to Don willingly. Thankful for the second chance, Don catches Pachirisu and the group continues their journey. As the heroes travel to Flow Roma Town, they meet a mean Pokemon hunter named Hunter J. She steals Pokemon to make money. Seeing J being really mean, Ash decides to stop her. 
Even Team Rocket wants to put a stop to her plans. Jay captures Pikachu and Gardevoir, turning them into statues. The heroes, along with Team Rocket, join forces to stop her. Using Curlia's psychic powers, they find where Jay is and sneak into her invisible airship. Inside, they discover a room full of captured Pokemon. Apom hears Jay planning to sell Meowth's talking ability, so they plan a rescue mission. In the end, Jay escapes without the Pokemon, and the heroes are determined to stop her again in the future. In Floaroma Town, the heroes meet for Scythia, who turned the once dull area into a beautiful place with her Rose Raid. After some events no one really cares about, the heroes leave Floaroma Town, with Dawn excited to show off her skills in the upcoming Pokemon contest. As Dawn, Ash, and Brock prepare pair for the Pokemon contest, they encounter Kenny, Don's childhood friend and fellow coordinator. A friendly rivalry emerges between Don's Piplup and Kenny's evolved Primplup during a practice battle, drawing attention from Team Rocket. In the midst of the skirmish, Team Rocket attempts to swipe Primplup, but Don's Piplup showcases a new move, Whirlpool, thwarting their efforts and saving Primplup. Kenny is inspired to compete and win the upcoming contest, setting the stage for a friendly competition with Don. Don and Pachirisu perform well in the Pokemon contest, using moves like Discharge and Sweet Kiss to impress the audience. They make it to the next round along with Kenny. Jessie, going by Jessalina, wows everyone with her Dustox's power. In the following round, Don competes against Jessie and Piplup wins against Dustox. Don and Kenny eventually face each other in a captivating battle and Piplup emerges victorious, earning Don her first ribbon. Kenny bids farewell, and Don is excited to continue collecting more ribbons on her journey to the Grand Festival. The heroes meet the champ twins, Ryan and Brian, who have won 16 battles in a row in tag battles. Although their first battle is a bit clumsy, Ash and Don learn from their mistakes and decide to challenge the twins again. This time, with better coordination and strategy, Ash and Don win the battle, impressing the champ twins and a Sinnoh now reporter. The reporter is so impressed that they decide to feature the hero's second battle on their TV show due to its exciting action. The heroes encounter Cheryl, a treasure hunter searching for enchanted honey, and decide to assist her in finding it. Cheryl's Burmy is having trouble evolving into Mothim, so Ash and his Pokemon team up to help with the training. With Mothim now able to track the scent of enchanted honey, the group follows its lead toward Amber Castle. The friends meet Gardenia, a specialist in grass-type Pokemon, while looking for enchanted honey in the Eterna Forest. After a battle, Gardenia decides to join their adventure and shares the importance of the honey in her grandfather's collection. Mothim guides them to Combi and they follow it, hoping to find the Combi wall and the special enchanted honey. Team Rocket tries to steal the honey, but ends up falling into a hole. Motham shows them a hidden tunnel behind a waterfall. Inside the castle, they run into an upset swarm of Combi, disturbed by Team Rocket's actions. Vespaquen, the Guardian, helps stop Team Rocket. When Team Rocket tries to escape, Vespaquen uses Power Gem to send them flying away. Cheryl gets a pot of honey, and everyone enjoys its fantastic taste. Cheryl decides to continue her journey alone, leaving Brock heartbroken. Meanwhile, Team Rocket deals with angry Pokemon attracted to the spilled honey. In a Pokemon contest where Pokemon imitate other species, Ash, Brock, and Don join the fun. Brock's Krogunk wins by perfectly imitating a Politoed. However, Team Rocket tries to steal the prize, a mysterious Pokemon egg. Brock's sharp eyes catch their plan, and with their Pokemon's help, they get the egg back. The judges declare Brock and Krogunk the winners, rewarding them with the special Pokemon egg. Brock is happy about the Pokemon egg he won, and the group hears about a wild weasel causing trouble. They try to catch it but struggle until they meet Zoe, a coordinator. Zoe battles Buizel, and even though her Glammeow gets defeated, Ash and Pikachu weaken Buizel. Team Rocket tries to steal Buizel, leading to a battle where Buizel is rescued, and Don catches it. Zoe suggests Don enter the Hard Home City contest, and they part ways on good terms. After Don catches Buizel, it proves challenging to control during battles, even causing harm to other Pokemon. Seeking guidance, the group meets Lucian, a Sinnoh Elite Form member. Lucian battles Don's Buizel, defeating it with his Bronzong. Disheartened, Buizel gets captured by Team Rocket. However, inspired by Don's determination, Buizel breaks free, defeats Team Rocket, and has a rematch with Lucian. Although the battle ends inconclusively, Lucian acknowledges Don and Buizel's progress. The heroes visit an Eterna City museum and witness Team Rocket stealing the Adamant Orb, leading to Officer Jenny's quick response in the ceiling of museum doors. Meanwhile, Brock's attempts at flirting with Gardenia, the Eterna City gym leader, get comically carried away. Officer Jenny mistakenly suspects Nando, a troubadour, in the theft, but Gardenia vouches for him, revealing he recently earned a gym badge. 
The heroes join forces with Nando to thwart Team Rocket's plans and recover the stolen adamant orb. As a mysterious helicopter hints at someone else behind the theft, Gardenia invites Ash to battle at her gym, and the heroes continue their journey intrigued by legends of Dialga and Palkia, the lords of time and space. Don't worry, we have a whole movie dedicated to these two behemoths, which we will get to after this next episode. The heroes challenge the Eterna City Gym, known for its lush, grassy environment. Gardenia, the gym leader, accepts Ash's challenge. Ash, after a tough battle which you will have to watch for yourself, manages to beat Gardenia, earning him the Forest Badge. Now, before we head back to the series, we have to cover a movie that canonically falls right here. This movie is Pokemon The Rise of Darkrai. In the beginning, a scientist named Tonio reads a diary from someone named Godi that predicts trouble caused by a battle between two powerful Pokemon, Palkia and Dialga. This leads to disruptions like an hourglass falling in his lab. The main story follows Ash, Brock, and Dawn as they try to reach Alamos Town for a Pokemon contest but end up in the wrong place. They meet a girl named Alice and her Chimchar who offers them a balloon ride to the town. Alice, who guides balloon tours and studies music, shows them around the town amid a battle between dimensions, causing some turbulence. To make up for the bumpy start, Alice gives the trio a grand tour of the town. Later, Alice takes Ash, Brock, and Dawn to a calm Pokemon garden from her childhood. Trouble starts when their Pokemon begin to quarrel. Alice uses a leaf whistle, a gift from her late grandmother, to calm them down. A Gallade appears, sensing the problem, and guides them to a damaged temple. Baron Alberto blames Darkrai, a Pokemon known for causing nightmares, for the damage. Tonio, the scientist from earlier, accidentally reveals himself. Baron tries to win over Alice, but she prefers Tonio. Darkrai shows up in the garden, and Baron's attempt to attack it puts Ash in a nightmare. In a dream, Ash faces Palkia and tries to save Pikachu from a void. As he wakes up at the Pokemon Center, Tonio learns about Darkrai's connection to Alice's grandmother and Godi. Meanwhile, Baron, unaware of Team Rocket's disguise, plans to confront Darkrai with them. The next day, Ash, Brock, Don, and Tonio go to the space-time towers in Alamos Town. They learn that the legendary Pokemon Palkia caused the sudden disturbance by entering their dimension. Darkrai returns, creating chaos with nightmares and turning Baron into a Licky Licky. The town gets covered in mysterious fog, and any attempt to leave brings them back to the town. While Baron blames Darkrai, Tonio believes Darkrai isn't at fault and reveals that Darkrai once saved Alice. They find out that Palkia and Darkrai are in conflict, causing the town to switch between dimensions. Dialga joins the battle, causing severe damage. Realizing the power of the song Orasion, played by Alice on her whistle, they plan to perform it on the tower's instrument to calm the battling Pokemon and save the town. After discovering the music disc, Ash, Dawn, and Alice and Tonio climb the tower to calm the battling legendary Pokemon Dialga and Palkia. Darkrai sacrifices itself to protect them, taking a powerful attack from both dragons. As Ash and Dawn ascend the tower, they witness Darkrai's heroic sacrifice. With Darkrai no longer there, there's concern that the dimension will collapse. They reach the musical instrument, but the power source is down. Pikachu and Pachirisu provide the needed electricity, playing the soothing song Rasion. The music calms Dialga and Palkia, restoring the town and saving everyone. Grateful for Darkrai's sacrifice, the group expresses their thanks and Alice sheds a tear for the fallen Pokemon. As they walk away, they catch a glimpse of a shadow on the cliffside. When they look back, Darkrai is standing heroically on top of the space-time towers. Honestly, that was such a badass moment that I'll never forget. The film concludes with a glimpse of future events, showing Dawn's Pokemon contest and Dialga preparing for a new adventure, leaving a sense of hope and continuation. Alright, that was Pokemon The Rise of Darkrai, now back to the show. The heroes are on their way to Heart Home City when they encounter a storm and seek refuge in a Pokemon Center. Surprisingly, they find the center deserted, and Nurse Joy explains its decline in popularity due to the construction of Cycling Road. To lift Nurse Joy's spirits, Brock offers to help her hatch an egg, which turns out to be a Hapini. While celebrating the new addition, Team Rocket tries to steal Hapini to create their own Pokemon Center. The heroes successfully stop Team Rocket's plan. Brock catches Hapini, and they all join forces to revive the Pokemon Center. With the Center back in action, they continue their journey to Hardhome City. The heroes watch a TV battle between Cynthia, the best trainer in Sinnoh, and Lucian. Cynthia's strong Garchomp beats Lucian's Pokemon with powerful moves. Paul challenges Cynthia but decides to withdraw from the battle, realizing Garchomp's strength. Cynthia helps heal Paul's Pokemon and talks about the importance of connecting with them. 
After the battle, Cynthia mentions she's heading to Celestic Town to see a special orb. The heroes and Cynthia say goodbye and continue on their journeys. The heroes find Zoe injured in the forest and decide to help. While treating her, Zoe shares her plan to perfect the double performance for the upcoming Heart Home contest. Team Rocket overhears and plans to enter the contest as well. Zoe trains with Dawn, showcasing her skills and giving advice. Dawn decides to use Zoe's suggestions in her routine. After an unsuccessful try, they battle Team Rocket and Zoe defeats Jessalina. At the Pokemon Center, Zoe encourages Dawn and wishes Ash luck in his gym battles. The heroes find a rare shield on near Mount Coronet but face trouble when a member of Hunter J's team tries to capture it. Gary, Professor Oak's grandson, arrives to help, revealing his efforts to protect the area. Hunter J herself appears, and Ash, Gary, and their Pokemon battle her to save Shieldon. Despite their best efforts, Shieldon gets captured and turned to stone. Ash and Gary sneak onto Jay's airship for a rescue mission, successfully freeing Shieldon and stopping Jay's plans. Jay's bosses cancel the deal, and she promises to find new clients. Gary and Ash part ways, and Officer Jenny starts investigating Hunter J. The heroes are on a mission to get a Poketch application for Dawn. They encounter challenges in a maze set up by Team Rocket, who pretend to be helpful elders. Navigating through the maze, Ash, Pikachu, and Paul get separated from Dawn and Brock. After some twists and turns, the team reunites near the exit. Pikachu steps up to foil Team Rocket's plans, and they successfully obtain the desired application for Dawn. The heroes rest near Hardhome City and meet Mira, who offers a shortcut using her Abra's teleportation. The teleportation goes wrong, leading them to a dam. Mira reveals her need for help in finding her friend's trapped Sandshrew underwater. The heroes agree to assist, facing a Gyarados Guardian and discovering the hidden school. Despite Team Rocket's interference, they cleverly defeat them and rescue Sandshrew. Grateful, Mira safely teleports them to Hardhome City, allowing them to continue their journey. In Hardhome City, Ash wants his third gym badge, but the gym is closed. Instead, he learns about a tag battle competition. Meanwhile, Don forgets to register for a contest, but rushes to do so with Nando. The contest has great performances, and Nando, Jesse, and Zoe move to the second round. Sadly, Don doesn't make it, and she feels upset. In the end, Nanda wins the contest and Don spends time with Zoe who encourages her to do better in the next contest. In Hardhome City, there's a tag battle contest and Don joins reluctantly with Conway as her partner. Brock pairs up with Holly and Ash is stuck with Paul, which he doesn't like. The prize for winning is a pair of Soothe Bells. Don and Conway do well in their practice battle, showing good teamwork. However, Ash and Paul struggle to work together in their practice as Paul doesn't value Ash's ideas. Despite the differences, Ash and Paul manage to win their actual contest battle by combining Pikachu's Iron Tail with Chimchar's Flame Wheel. The tension between them grows as they argue about their collaboration. Ash and Paul have different ideas about how to train Pokemon. Ash cares about his Pokemon's well-being, but Paul is more focused on making them stronger, even if it's tough on them. When his Chimchar collapses, Ash takes it to the Pokemon Center for help. Even though Paul seems not to care much, Chimchar actually wants to become stronger. The next day, they have a tag battle during which Chimchar struggles because of its tough training. Paul decides to let Chimchar go and catch a new Fire-type Pokemon, but Ash talks to Chimchar, asking him to join his team. Paul's tough training has made Chimchar upset, and it decides to join Ash's team. Team Rocket tries to steal Chimchar, but Ash and Pikachu rescue it successfully. In the quarterfinals, Ash and Paul win the tag battle contest. Even though Paul is not very interested, Ash with Chimchar now on his team manages to win the whole tournament. Paul, realizing that Chimchar is evolving, gives Ash a Soothe Bell as a sign of their changing friendship. Now, Ash sets his sights on challenging the Veilstone City Gym. Now it's time for Pokemon DP Battle Dimension, which is considered part two of Diamond and Pearl. The heroes visit a town where Gardenia is promoting Pokemon battles. Team Rocket decides to steal Pokemon, leading to an unexpected tag battle between James and Gardenia against Ash and Dawn. After losing, James agrees to let Gardenia train his Pokemon, Cacnea, realizing it needs proper guidance. Despite objections from Jesse and Meowth, James leaves Cacnea under Gardenia's care for its well-being. As Team Rocket departs, James bids a bittersweet farewell to Cacnea. In a town, Jesse and Meowth try to cheer up James, who is sad about giving away Cacnea. Dawn, inspired by a contest on TV, plans to participate in the next one at Salacion Town. Meanwhile, Jesse and Meowth worry about James and try to steal Pokemon to lift his spirits. 
Apom and Buizel outsmart Team Rocket in battle, and Ash and Dawn trade Buizel and Apom temporarily to see how well they work together. The heroes go to Salacion Town, and Dawn starts practicing for a Pokemon contest. Dawn's friend Kenny shows up and says he has two ribbons making it a friendly competition. Meanwhile, the bad guys from Team Galactic are seen in the town. The heroes explore some ancient ruins and find a strange Pokemon called Unknown. Team Galactic's actions make the Unknown upset and chaos ensues. In the midst of the confusion, Apom evolves into Ambipom. Eventually, things calm down and the heroes, along with Team Rocket, manage to escape from the ruins. Dawn feels more confident about the contest with her new Ambipom, and Kenny promises to teach Turtwig a new move. Dawn participates in a Pokemon contest in Salacion Town with her Ambipom. She gives a fantastic performance, impressing the crowd and making it to the final round against Jessalina, who is actually Jessie in disguise. Despite Dawn's strong effort, Jessalina unexpectedly wins, leaving Dawn feeling sad and doubting her skills as a Pokemon coordinator. The next day, Zoe arrives and encourages Dawn to keep competing. As the group heads to Veilstone City, Zoe boosts Ash's determination to win for Dawn, giving her a renewed sense of confidence as she continues her journey as a coordinator. During lunch, the heroes encounter a group of Gligar led by a Gliscor, and these Pokemon snatch away their food. Paul and Team Rocket also want these Pokemon. Officer Jenny and Nurse Joy explain that strong winds brought the Pokemon to the city, making it hard for them to return to the forest. Team Rocket captures the Gligar and Gliscor, but a lone Gligar helps the heroes set them free. When Gliscor is in danger, Paul captures it. With the help of Jenny and Joy, the heroes use wind-based tactics to guide the Gligar back to the forest. Despite Paul not caring much, Ash gains a new friend as the Gligar that fell on him decides to join him on his journey. In Veilstone City, Ash and his friends meet Maylene, a strong trainer, and her Lucario. Paul's Electabuzz causes chaos during their encounter. Reggie, Paul's brother, shows up and introduces Maylene as the gym leader. Maylene, feeling conflicted after losing to Paul, decides to quit being a gym leader. Don and Lucario try to convince her otherwise while Team Rocket plans to steal Lucario. Ash accepts a battle challenge from Reggie and impresses with his well-trained Pokemon. Don successfully persuades Maylene to reconsider her decision. Team Rocket's plan to capture Lucario fails, and the episode ends with Reggie and Ash having a friendly battle. Don gets ready to battle Veilstone City's gym leader, Maylene, to inspire her and boost her confidence. At the same time, Ash trains his Staravia to learn the strong move called Brave Bird. Dawn faces Maylene in the battle, using her Pokemon Baneri and Ambipom, and using tactics similar to those in Pokemon contests. Maylene encourages Dawn to fight seriously and sends out her powerful Lucario, which defeats both Ambipon and Piplup. Even though Dawn loses the battle, Maylene is impressed by her determination and decides to continue as the gym leader. Ash expresses his eagerness to challenge Maylene and promises to return once Staravia has mastered the Brave Bird move. In a tough gym battle in Veilstone City, Ash goes up against Maylene, who uses Machoke and Meditite. Staravia and Chinchar give their best effort but end up getting defeated. Ash then sends out Buizel, and it impressively shows off its moves against Maylene's Lucario. The battle reaches an intense climax when both Pokemon fall at the same time after a clash between Water Pulse and Force Palm. Touched by the intensity of the battle, Maylene decides to give Ash the Cobble Badge as recognition for the exceptional fight. After Ash's hard-fought victory against Maylene, Reggie congratulates him for earning the Cobble Badge through the sheer intensity of the battle. The group climbs to a high vantage point and discovers that Veilstone City's landmarks are meteorites attracting many visitors. Meanwhile, Team Galactic, led by Saturn, aims to acquire the meteorites to unlock a mysterious power. The heroes, joined by Officer Jenny, confront Team Galactic, leading to a battle to protect the meteorites. Despite interference from Team Rocket, the heroes successfully thwart Team Galactic's plans and and ensure the safety of Veilstone City's unique treasures. Pikachu faces off against a Raichu owned by a man named Sho, who wants to complete his full power evolution set with a Pikachu. Ash challenges Sho to prove Pikachu's strength, but the battle takes a toll on Pikachu, causing it to collapse. At the Pokemon Center, Pikachu is stabilized. Pikachu recalls its bond with Ash and decides not to evolve, rejecting the Thunderstone. The next day, Ash trains Pikachu and they face Sho again. Using clever tactics, Pikachu defeats Raichu in battle. Team Rocket secretly cheers for Pikachu, and Sho acknowledges Ash's victory but promises a different outcome in their next encounter. The Sinnoh Now TV News reports that Wallace, the former gym leader turned champion, has arrived in Sinnoh and organized the Wallace Cup near Lake Valor. Dawn decides to enter the cup and her Pokemon undergo rigorous training. The Sinnoh Now staff ask the trio about Wallace and they learn he is nearby. They embark on a search with Team Rocket overhearing. 
In the fog, they find Wallace and Don showcases Piplup against Buizel, impressing Wallace. He advises Don to enjoy bonding with her Pokemon. Meanwhile, Ash receives a call from Snowpoint City and the caller is revealed to be none other than May. Ash, Brock, and Don excitedly await May's arrival at Lake Valor. May arrives on a ship showing off her newly evolved Glaceon. She shares her adventures, including evolving Eevee into Glaceon using an ice rock in Snowpoint City. May updates the group on her brother Max's involvement in Pokemon care and provides news about Drew and Harley. The quartet then plans to go to a fancy restaurant, but their plans are interrupted by a tag battle challenge from Roman and Kylie. They effortlessly defeat the challengers, but Team Rocket steals the restaurant's food, leading to a showdown. May's Glaceon and Don's Baneri defeat Team Rocket, earning them an invitation to eat. The evening ends with May and Don bonding over their contest experiences. The Wallace Cup begins with May, Don, and Ash as participants. May amazes everyone with her War Turtle's aquatic performance. Zoe dazzles with her Finneon, and Ash impresses the audience with Buizel's water-themed showcase. However, Jesse's Wobbuffet act goes disastrously, disappointing everyone. Amidst the competition, nerves affect Don, but with Piplup's assistance, she showcases Ambipom's skills, earning praise from the judges. May, Don, Ash, and Zoe are advanced to the next round while the sulking Jesse fails to qualify. The contest reaches its finals and Don faces her toughest challenge, the surprise guest, May. Their battle is intense, with both sides giving their best. The contest concludes with a dazzling exchange of moves as time runs out. In the end, Don emerges victorious, earning the Aqua Ribbon from Wallace. May gracefully congratulates Don on her win. The friends share heartfelt goodbyes as May departs for Johto contest, leaving Ash with wishes for success in the Sinnoh League. While on their journey, Don happily admires her second ribbon, but things take an unexpected turn when they meet a boy named Tyler desperately chasing a Yanma that he wants to catch. Tyler shares his Pokemon journey story, revealing that he recently started and wishes for Yanma to be his first Pokemon. The heroes decide to help him, but Team Rocket interferes, capturing Yanma and causing disappointment for Tyler. Undeterred, the heroes rally Tyler's spirits and set out to find another Yanma. In the end, Tyler successfully catches the Yanma he wanted and the heroes encourage him to make friends on his journey as they continue theirs. In preparation for his Pastoria gym battle, Ash trains his Pokemon including Buizel, Pikachu, and Turtwig against Don, Staravia, Chimchar, and Piplup. Later, Paul, still critical of Ash's training methods, challenges him to a 3 on 3 battle. Despite initial setbacks, Chimchar's Blaze ability activates, allowing it to defeat Paul's Ursa Ring, although Chimchar is a bit out of control and Ash has to hold him down himself. Ash, determined to win the Sinnoh League, encourages his team, promising hard work for success. The heroes reach Pastoria City and meet the gym leader, Crasher Wake, who invites them to a Krogunk festival. During the festival, Krogunk competes for a crown and Brock's Krogunk wins, showcasing its strength. However, Team Rocket intervenes with a robot to steal the crown, leading to a chaotic battle. Nurse Joy's Krogunk, named Chrissy, emerges as the hero, defeating Team Rocket and saving the festival. As a result, Chrissy is crowned the champion. Impressed by Pikachu's abilities, Wake agrees to battle Ash the next day. After intense training, the gym battle begins with Pikachu facing Gyarados, resulting in a strategic and challenging battle where Pikachu eventually emerges victorious. Turtwig and Buizel also contribute to the battle, showcasing their strengths. Wake's Floatzel proves to be a formidable opponent, leading to an intense showdown between Floatzel and Buizel. In the end, Buizel's determination and Water-type moves secure victory, earning Ash the Fen Badge. As the heroes return to Hardhome City, they come across a Swinub who develops a liking for Don's specially designed Puffins. However, Team Rocket kidnaps all the Pokemon in the mansion they are staying in, and a rescue mission ensues. Swinub, with its keen sense of smell, leads the way to Team Rocket. After a battle, Don catches Swinub, and the heroes continue their journey towards Celestic Town for the upcoming contest. Following that, Ash tries to train his scared Gligar, which doesn't go so well. Gary arrives and suggests using a Razor Fang to help Gligar evolve into Gliscor and encourages Ash to help Gligar conquer its fears first. During training, Gligar is kidnapped by Team Rocket, but after the heroes locate it, Gligar evolves into Gliscor and sends the villains flying. Grateful for Gary's help, Ash and Gliscor continue their journey with newfound determination. The heroes return to Hardhome City for Ash's gym battle only to discover that the gym leader is still away. Honestly, I'd be pretty mad if it happened to me twice. While waiting, Don meets Pokemon stylist Paris, who suggests entering the Hardhome Collection fashion show. Coco, a rival stylist, mocks Don's Baneri. Undeterred, Don and Baneri deliver an elegant performance that wins them the competition, leaving Coco quite upset. 
Now, it is time for the movie Pokemon Giratina and the Sky Warrior. The movie starts with Shaman enjoying an oasis when Dialga shows up, but then Giratina from the reverse world attacks Dialga. Giratina pulls Dialga into his world and Shaman gets caught in a whirlwind and pulled through the portal too. While the big Pokemon battle, a man who loves adventure watches from far away and notices Shaman. At the same time, a bad guy named Zero watches Giratina, planning to catch it. Shaman, after absorbing some dark gas, causes an explosion that makes a portal back to the real world. Dialga escapes, but Giratina gets stuck in a time loop. Shaman falls down a mountain and lands in a seaside town where Ash, Brock, and Don are eating. Even with some chaos and Piplup attacking, Don saves Shaman. It's also revealed that Shaman can communicate using thoughts. After bringing Shaman to a Pokemon Center, Brock's attempts to flirt with Nurse Joy are interrupted by Krogunk. Shaman leads Ash, Dawn, Pikachu, and Piplup towards a flower garden, controlling Ash like a puppet. Team Rocket plans to steal Shaman but accidentally gets pulled into a portal to the reverse world. There, they meet Giratina and Ash and his friends jump in to save Shaman. Newton Graceland, a self-proclaimed genius scientist, helps them get back to the real world. He explains that Palkia and Dialga's fight caused black smoke in the reverse world, upsetting Giratina. Back in the garden, they encounter Magnemite and Magneton before facing Zero, a villain on a hoverboard with Magnezone. They encounter Magnemite and Magneton before facing Zero, a villain on a hoverboard with Magnezone. The group, now on a train, learns about Shaman's sky form, triggered by special flowers on a mountain. They defend against Zero's Pokemon during a train attack. On a boat journey, Shaman, Ash, and his friends have another encounter with Zero, leading to a cave where Giratina and Shaman battle. Pikachu saves Shaman as it turns back to its landform. Giratina gets trapped by Zero's airship, draining its energy. While everyone except Brock confronts Zero on his ship, Newton sneaks in to disable the computer and reveals that Zero was his former student obsessed with Giratina's power. Newton accidentally turns off the ship's engines, freeing Giratina but causing the ship to crash. Shaman heals Giratina, leading to a chase between Giratina and Zero in the reverse world. In the real world, Zero's actions disturb a glacier, putting the town in danger. Reggie Gigas and a herd of Mamoswine step in to stop the glacier. Shaman transforms into Skyform, creating a portal for Ash to enter the reverse world, where Giratina is struggling against Zero. Despite Ash's efforts to reason with Zero, Shaman absorbs a dark cloud, making a portal back to the real world. Everyone is pulled through, leaving the reverse world just in time for Giratina to escape. Zero's ship crashes, and Officer Jenny arrests him. In the closing credits, Ash, Dawn, and Brock leave the town, continuing their Pokemon journey, and their parents receive a bouquet of Gracidia. The film ends with Shaman bidding an emotional farewell, all Shaman transforming into Skyform and flying away, and Giratina flying off to continue its pursuit of Dialga. Alright, back to the series. The heroes go to the Pokemon Summer Academy at Mount Coronet, organized by Professor Rowan. They split into teams and do bonding exercises with their Pokemon. Ash and Angie have a rivalry that gets more intense during training, and they have a tough battle that ends in a tie. Dawn does well with her Grimer, earning her the title of most valuable attendant for the day. Later, James and Meowth make dinner for everyone. Even though their team is not winning, Ash and Angie are determined to do well in the challenges ahead. The attendants at Pokemon Summer Academy are assigned to watch water-type Pokemon without catching them. While rowing in boats, Ash, Angie, and the others see different water-type Pokemon. Ash and Angie want to swim to get a closer look, but they argue and mess up their observations. While looking for Pokemon, Shinx goes missing, and they follow a mysterious light into a cave. Inside, they find a Luminion, and Jesse from the green team tries to catch it. A battle happens and Team Rocket loses. Even though they left the right area, the heroes get points for their report. The day ends with them cleaning windows and hoping to see Luminion again. On the fifth day of the Pokemon Summer Academy, the focus is on ghost-type Pokemon, challenging teams to find a hidden metal in the ruins. Each team reacts differently when encountering ghost Pokemon. Ash's team attacks, Brock's team tries feeding it, and Dawn's team runs away. Conway, paired with a mysterious girl, is led toward danger by a ghost girl. Misinterpretations arise when Dusk Noir saves Conway, with Don believing it attacked him. Meowth, disguised as a ghost, is also saved by Dusk Noir, leading to further misunderstandings. Ash and Angie, guided by the ghost girl, encounter Dusk Noir, resulting in a revelation that Dusk Noir was protecting them. The cave collapses, earning all teams 30 points. Despite Team Blue's lead, Ash remains optimistic about Team Red's chances. 
In the Pokemon Triathlon's conclusion, a friendly rivalry starts between Ash and Angie, but things get tense, making the race full of competition. During the final leg, Ash and Angie fiercely compete and enter a cave where a near disaster is avoided when Ash saves Angie. In the end, Ash narrowly wins. This victory boosts Team Red's points, putting them in the lead. They celebrate with a feast and Ash and Angie share a moment. However, Ash sees her as a friend, but Angie was hoping for a more romantic approach. As they part ways, the friends set their sights on Celestic Town for Don's upcoming Pokemon contest. Fantina, a skilled gym leader and top coordinator, impresses Zoe with her battling skills using Miss Magius. Ash and the group join the encounter and learn that Fantina has decided to travel and improve her skills. Team Rocket, aware of her dual expertise, wants to benefit from her knowledge. Don and Ash are excited to challenge Fantina, and a coin toss decides the order. Ash faces Drifloon first, but struggles against its hypnosis and powerful moves. Despite efforts from Chimchar and Pikachu, Drifloon evolves into Drifblim, giving Fantina the advantage. Although Ash accepts defeat, he stays determined for a rematch and hopes to come up with a strategy to counter hypnosis next time. Don and Brog visit Lilo's Pokestylist shop in Celestic Town. Meanwhile, Ash, inspired by his Pokemon, tries to come up with a strategy to defeat Fantina's hypnosis. At the contest hall, Don learns that Leela is her mother's rival and a former top coordinator. Later, Leela shares her journey having transitioned from a coordinator to a pokey stylist. As Don progresses through round, she eventually faces Leela in a heated battle. Despite challenges, Don's Ambipom emerges victorious, earning her a third ribbon. Leela gives them gifts from her shop and the group leaves arms with newfound knowledge. Officer Jenny is taking a special orb to Celestic Town, and it's guarded by Golbat. But then Team Galactic tries to steal the special orb. When the heroes hear about it, they go to a research center where Cynthia and her grandmother study another special orb called the Lustrous Orb. There's a guy named Cyrus who's really interested in the orb. While exploring, they find carvings of the Lake Guardians on a big rock. Cyrus talks about how time, space, and a place called Mount Coronet are connected. But then Team Galactic shows up, causing trouble and letting Golbat loose. The heroes, along with Cyrus and Cynthia, try to protect the lustrous orb. Saturn and the bad guys from Team Galactic demand they give up the orb, and it looks like there's going to be a big fight to keep it safe. After Team Galactic's attack on Celestic Town, Ash, Brock, Don, and Champion Cynthia battle against Saturn and Mars. Team Rocket tries to take the Lustrous Orb, but escapes when Cyrus lets them go. Officer Jenny warns about Team Galactic's ongoing threats. Cynthia explains the importance of the Adamant and Lustrous Orbs connected to Dialga and Palkia. Despite their efforts, Team Galactic manages to steal the Lustrous Orb. The group leaves, and Cyrus, revealed as the Galactic leader, is disappointed in his team. Meanwhile, Jupiter plans to capture the Lake Guardians, and Cyrus reveals the Advanced Red Chain project. On their way to Hardhome City, Ash, Don, and Brock find a public training session led by Aaron of the Elite Four. Officer Jenny is impressed by Aaron's popularity and strength, mentioning that he even challenged Champion Cynthia to a battle. Aaron agrees to sign autographs for the crowd, and Don talks with him about Cynthia. Aaron invites the group to his personal training center. During training, Ash finds it challenging to keep up with Aaron's intense workouts. Team Rocket tries but fails to capture their Pokemon. After the encounter, Aaron wishes Ash luck on his journey, and the group continues their adventure. Ash and his friends watch an intense battle between Aaron and Cynthia, where Aaron is defeated. Paul, who is in the crowd, catches their attention. Ash challenges Paul to a battle, and it becomes Turtwig against Honchkrow. During the battle, Turtwig evolves into Grottle, but has trouble dealing with its new weight. After the loss, Grottle feels down and sneaks out at night to train for speed. With help from Paul's Torterra, Grotto learns the importance of defense. Ash thanks Paul, who remains indifferent, and Ash promises to win their next encounter. The heroes return to Hardhome City, where Ash encounters a spirited trainer named Barry. Barry accuses Ash of theft, but later recognizes Ash as Paul's tag battle partner. Later, Ash engages Barry in a battle, and despite Chimchar's defeat, Pikachu secures victory against Barry's Empoleon. Barry acknowledges Ash's skill and vows to improve. Now, Ash is ready for his rematch with Fantina. This time, our hero is well prepared and comes out victorious, winning him the Relic Badge. Meanwhile, Jessie wins the Hard Home Contest, earning her second ribbon. Barry, contemplating a journey to Iron Island, challenges Ash to consider him a true rival if he defeats the Canalave Gym Leader, who specializes in Steel-type Pokemon. 
In Canalave City's gym, the heroes learn that the gym leader is away training on Iron Island. However, the island is plagued by nightmares caused by Darkrai, as Cresselia, responsible for countering Darkrai's influence, is missing. The gang discovers that Team Rocket is selling fake lunar wings to induce nightmares, but Pikachu's Thunderbolt sends them blasting off. With Jenny's gratitude, they receive dinner in a room for the night. Later, a nightmare prompts them to see Cresselia on Full Moon Island. Team Rocket attempts to capture Cresselia, but Swinub evolves into Piloswine, thwarting their plan. Cresselia reappears and drives off Darkrai, ending the nightmares on the island. And this is where DP Battle Dimension ends. Now we have the DP Galactic Battles. The gang learns about upcoming contests in Chakavine Town. While training for the gym, Dawn has a hard time connecting with her newly evolved Piloswine, which doesn't seem to listen to her. Meanwhile, Ash and Pikachu train with Grottle and Gliscor. During a battle, Piloswine evolves into Mamoswine, becoming more powerful and independent. Despite challenges, Ash is excited about facing Canalave City's gym leader, Byron. The gang returns to Canalave City's gym, where Byron and his son Rorik are arguing about their fossil collections. Byron, the Canalave City gym leader, and Rorik, the Orberg City gym leader, decide to settle their differences with a battle. Rorik explains to Ash that Byron was originally the Orberg City gym leader and left him in charge when he moved to Canalave. Their battle is intense, with both sides showing powerful moves. Team Rocket tries to steal fossils, but Byron and Rorik stop them, leading to a touching moment between father and son. Ash faces Byron, the Canalave City gym leader, in a tough battle. I'll spare you the details, the bottom line is that Ash won, earning him the Mind Badge, his sixth Sinnoh Gym Badge. Barry, along with Ash and the gang, experiences a strange event on Iron Island where Steel-type Pokemon become aggressive. They seek help from Riley, a trainer who specializes in Steel-type Pokemon and lives on the island. Meanwhile, Team Galactic, led by Mars, is conducting research related to a powerful artifact linked to the legendary Pokemon Palkia and Dialga. As the investigation unfolds, Lucario, Riley's partner, gets possessed by a dark aura after the artifact activates. Riley, who is an aura guardian, uses his own aura to shield them. However, Lucario, influenced by the energy from the ruins, becomes more uncontrollable. Through teamwork, they destroy the machine causing chaos and prevent the destruction of the island. Professor Carolina finds out that the machine is made from the same material as the meteors in Veilstone City. Despite Mars' failure, Cyrus assigns Saturn to continue excavating something called the Spear Pillar for their sinister plans. The gang then arrives in Chakavine Town for Don's upcoming contest. They encounter a new rival, Ursula, who challenges Don to a contest battle. Despite Ursula's confident attitude, Don and Pachirisu emerge victorious in the finals, earning Don her fourth ribbon. The group arrives in Squallville, a place known for its strong gusts, and they discover a Poke Ringer competition is happening. Ash decides to join, hoping to win honorary citizenship and Pokemon food. Jessie, in disguise, lends James her Yen Mega for the competition. Both Ash and Paul enter the tournament, and after many rounds, they face off in the finals. In a fierce battle, Ash's Staravia evolves into Staraptor, securing his victory against Paul's Honchkrow. Despite Paul's not-so-excited reaction, Ash is thrilled to have a powerful new addition to his team. Don's Piplup resists evolving and exhausts itself using Bide to suppress the energy. After a close encounter with Team Rocket that ends with Piplup saving Don, Nurse Joy provides an Everstone to prevent Piplup's evolution, and the friends head to Sandalstraw Town for Don's upcoming contest. Also, Barry and Kenny, friends from Twinleaf Town, join the group with Barry entering a ping pong tournament after the contest. Ash and Barry practice with confidence for the ping pong tournament. Don decides to enter the contest with Ambipom and plans to use her in both rounds. In the contest, Jesse, Lena, Kenny, and Don move to the next round with Jesse using Seviper defeat Ambipom. Despite Don losing, she stays positive and Kenny earns his fourth ribbon. As Kenny leaves to seek new experiences in Pokemon, Barry encourages Don to join the ping pong tournament with Ambipom, and she happily agrees. In the ping pong tournament, Ash teams up with Pikachu while Don partners with Ambipom. Barry explains the rules and they meet a mysterious ping pong champion named O. In the final, Don faces O, and although they lose, O offers to train Ambipom as a professional ping pong competitor. Don is unsure and seeks advice from Ash and Brock. Ambipom decides to go with O, leaving Don with mixed feelings but understanding her partner's desire. O invites them to Vermilion City in Kanto, and Don bids Ambipom farewell as they part ways. 
Bittersweet, but it is what it is. Ash, Dawn, and Brock meet Zoe in Snowpoint City and find out about the local Pokemon training school where Candace, the gym leader, teaches. Candace challenges Zoe to a battle and Team Rocket goes undercover at the school. There's a quiz and James tries to impress Candace but doesn't do well. Later, Zoe tells the story of how she and Glammeow became partners. Team Rocket tries to steal Pokeballs from the school, but Ash, Candace, and Zoe stop them. Now, Ash is ready to battle Candace for a seventh gym badge. After a tough battle, Ash wins the Icicle Badge. After the win, Paul challenges Candace, but she asks him to come back the next day since her Pokemon need time to heal. The following day, Reggie and Brandon join the group and Paul decides to challenge Brandon to a battle. Despite Paul's hard work, Brandon comes out as the winner. Reggie suggests a battle between Ash and Paul in 10 days near Lake Acuity. The heroes arrive at Lake Acuity and Ash eagerly prepares for his battle against Paul. Reggie's friend Olivier acts as the referee for the intense 6 on 6 battle. I recommend you watch this fight for yourself. At one point, Chimchar evolves into Monferno but still loses, leaving Ash emotionally shaken. The defeat marks a significant setback for Ash, raising questions about his future and leaving the onlookers, including Team Rocket in disguise, surprised by the outcome. After Ash's defeat by Paul, Nurse Joy takes care of his Pokemon with help from Brock and Hapini. Don and Piplup try to lift Ash's spirits and Don comes up with a circus performance to cheer him up. Meanwhile, Team Rocket devises a plan to capture Pikachu using an electric-proof net. During the circus act, Team Rocket interrupts, revealing their true identities. A battle follows, with Ash and his Pokemon fighting back against Team Rocket's schemes. The victory boosts Ash's confidence and the group heads to their next destination. The heroes return to Mount Coronet and rescue a lost Shellos. While trying to help it reunite with its friends, they stumble upon Team Galactic's secret excavation site. Looker, a member of the International Police, intervenes and Team Rocket briefly seizes a mysterious key. As chaos ensues, the Golbat thwarts Team Rocket and the cave starts flooding. Looker and the gang escape in a boat. Team Galactic retreats, realizing they found a different set of ruins. Looker returns to headquarters and the heroes promise to guide Shellos back to its home on the mountain's west side, now safe from getting lost. And now it is time for my favorite Pokemon movie of all time, Pokemon Arceus and the Jewel of Life. Thousands of years ago, the legendary alpha Pokemon Arceus visited Earth to reclaim the Jewel of Life that it had lent to a man named Damos. Unfortunately, because humans are greedy, Damos betrayed Arceus and attacked him with a big army of Pokemon. In response, Arceus counterattacked and, in the process, presumably killed Damos. After this event, Arceus decided to go to sleep, promising to evaluate all humans based on Damos' actions when it wakes up again in the future, kind of like a judgment day. Meanwhile, in present, Ash and his friends along with Kato and Kiko team up for a tag battle, and Ash and Don win. They decide to visit the famous ruins in Machina Town on Kato and Kiko's suggestion. However, a strange distortion opens up, causing a ripple in time and space. Pikachu and Piplup get swept away, but a girl named Sheena arrives and calls upon Dialga, the Pokemon that controls time. Dialga saves Pikachu and Piplup, impressing everyone. Another ripple appears, and this time Giratina, the renegade Pokemon, shows up and attacks Dialga in a fit of rage. Despite Sheena's efforts to calm Giratina, it keeps attacking. Giratina recognizes Ash as the person who once saved its life, calming its anger. Sheena uses her unique powers to communicate with Giratina and convinces it to stop fighting Dialga. Giratina understands and goes back to its dimension. Sheena and Kevin reveal their special abilities to connect with and communicate with Pokemon. Intrigued by Ash and Pikachu's potential link to a legendary past, Sheena invites them to join her on a journey. Brock, in his usual manner, tries to impress Sheena romantically, but Krogunk's poison jab thwarts his efforts. Another distortion appears, and Dialga gets caught in a water spout. However, Palkia, the Pokemon ruling over space, emerges and uses Spatial Ren to free Dialga and close the distortion. Sheena, with her unique powers, communicates with both Pokemon, resolving their conflict. Inside the ruins, Sheena and Kevin introduce the Time-Space Axis, a device to monitor disruptions. They share their experiences, including the restoration of Alamos Town and the investigation of the damaged glacier caused by Zero. Sheena explains the existence of different worlds, the human world, supported by Giratina's reverse world, and the temporal and spatial worlds inhabited by Dialga and Palkia. The three dragons, including Giratina, were created by the legendary Pokemon Arceus. 
Recent disturbances hint at Arceus' awakening, causing temporal and spatial ripples. As Arceus awakens in the center of space-time, the film sets the stage for a larger cosmic conflict that involves legendary Pokémon and the fate of multiple worlds. As Arceus arrives, it holds deep-seated resentment for the betrayal it suffered from Damos in the past. Arceus starts its judgment, launching energy beams that cause chaos and destruction in Machina and its ruins. Sheena, trying to make amends for the past betrayal, apologizes on behalf of her ancestor Damos and returns what she believes to be the Jewel of Life. However, Arceus shatters it, revealing it to be a fake. Unhappy, Arceus continues its destructive path, obliterating the ruins and causing chaos. In a desperate attempt to change the course of events, Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina step in to stop Arceus. Palkia manages to momentarily subdue Arceus, allowing Dialga to transport everyone except Kevin back in time. The group hopes to fix the past and prevent the betrayal that led to Arceus' vengeful arrival. Having traveled back in time, Ash, Brock, Don, and Sheena witness the events leading up to Damos' betrayal. As they approach the temple, they discover that another man, Marcus, is involved and controls a Heatran and Bronzong with peculiar armor. Damos' betrayal unfolds, and when Arceus counterattacks, the group along with Damos and Marcus is on the brink of falling to their deaths. In a desperate plea, Sheena prays to Dialga, prompting another time leap further into the past. In the present, Arceus gains the upper hand in the battle against the Dragon Trio, while Dialga, exhausted from sending the group back in time, faints. Arriving in the past, the group realizes that Dialga can no longer send them through time and they are surrounded by armed soldiers. Marcus, the man in the red toga, separates Sheena from the others, interrogating her about their arrival. Meanwhile, Ash, Brock, and Don find themselves imprisoned alongside Damos. In the jail cell, Damos recounts a story, revealing that he had once saved Arceus by returning its lost life plates. Arceus, grateful, granted Damos the use of its plates, and together they created the Jewel of Life, transforming the barren wasteland of Machina into a flourishing paradise. Damos built a shrine and vowed to return the Jewel of Life during the next solar eclipse. The gang realizes that the legend of Damos' betrayal was a fabricated lie and Damos was not the villain history portrayed him to be. In a surprising turn of events, Marcus pretends to support Sheena's cause but secretly takes the Jewel of Life from his Heatran staff, planning a deceitful act. However, just as Marcus is about to carry out his sinister plan, Damos, assisted by a spiky-eared Pichu, is freed from jail, preventing Marcus's betrayal. At the temple, during the solar eclipse, Arceus eagerly awaits Damos' return, unaware of the impending betrayal. Sheena exposes Marcus' true nature, leading to a devastating attack that encases Arceus in silver water. Ash and his friends arrive to confront Marcus, but their attempts to battle Heatran and Bronzong prove ineffective. Ash engages in hand-to-hand -hand combat with Marcus, who drops the Jewel of Life. Despite the dangerous situation, Ash manages to recover the jewel. Damos and Sheena work together to reach Arceus, with Brock intervening to divert the deadly silver water. As Arceus weakens under Marcus' relentless assault, Damos and Sheena connect with Damos' Pokémon, breaking the control imposed by the armor. Pikachu, freed from control, disappears along with Ash, indicating a dire consequence for the timeline. Marcus boasts that even if he fails, Arceus will perish, altering the future. Pikachu and Ash start to vanish, but Damos, reaching Arceus' last spark of life, prevents further harm. The plan unravels as Pikachu reappears and Damos revives Arceus by reabsorbing the Jewel of Life. With Marcus' scheme thwarted, Arceus saves the group, including Damos' Pokémon, before bidding farewell, expressing the need for rest. As the group begins to glow, Sheena mentions that Dialga is calling. Damos bids the group farewell before they vanish into the future, leaving behind a transformed past where the fabricated betrayal is unraveled and the true heroes emerge victorious. Upon returning to the present, Arceus remains angered and defeats Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, preparing a final judgment to obliterate Machina. In a pivotal moment, Ash's call reaches Arceus, triggering a memory of their past connection. Arceus halts the impending destruction and the changes from the altered past manifest, restoring Machina to its flourishing state. The Dragon Trio bid farewell to Ash and his friends before departing to their respective worlds. Brock questions the continuity of Machina's prosperity despite the Jewel of Life being returned, but Arceus clarifies that the dedication of Damos and others ensured Machina's beauty. 
Sheena discovers a new monument honoring her and the heroes, shedding tears as she learns the truth about her ancestor. Ash, Dawn, and Brock resume their Sinnoh journey, while the legendary Pokemon Dialga, Palkia, and Giratina, and Arceus live in harmony, bringing an end to the captivating tale. Now, back to the series. The heroes reach Twinleaf Town, where Dawn challenges her mother, Joanna, to a Pokemon battle. Meanwhile, Brock assists with the Twinleaf Festival preparations. Ash meets Nathaniel, a young aspiring trainer enthusiastic about bug-type Pokemon. Dawn has a battle against her mom, displaying her skills but ultimately losing. Joanna, however, praises Dawn's strong bond with her Pokemon. The heroes assist with festival preparations in Twinleaf Town. Professor Oak is supposed to start the event, but he is delayed. Team Rocket tries to trick the locals by having James dress up as Professor Oak. James reluctantly playing the role surprisingly impresses the audience during his lecture. The real Professor Oak returns just in time, and a Tyranitar helps confirm his identity. Team Rocket's attempt to deceive is exposed, and James is left hanging from a tree. During the Twinleaf Festival, Barry challenges Ash to a battle to prepare for the Pokemon Battle event. As the battle starts, a mysterious Zatu appears, leading Ash, Barry, and Dawn into a circus world filled with gigantic Pokemon. In this strange dimension, Zatu shows glimpses of the past and future. After reuniting with their Pokemon, the trio returns to the festival sharing their unique experiences. Meanwhile, Brock struggles to attract customers to his stand, and Team Rocket attempts to capitalize on the festival's success with their schemes. Barry's father, Palmer, in charge of a battle tower, comes to the Twinleaf Festival where a battling competition is announced. The winners will get the chance to challenge Palmer himself. As the battles unfold, Ash wins, earning the opportunity to face Palmer. In their battle, Palmer's powerful Rhyperior proves to be a challenge, defeating Ash's Grottle. Despite the loss, Ash stays positive and learns a valuable lesson from the experience. Later, as Ash, Brock, and Don get ready to go to Sunny Shore City, Palmer encourages Ash to bring a shock to the Sunny Shore City gym. Ash and his friends find a worried Meryl stuck between buildings. Its trainer, Lyra from Johto, rescues it. They learn about the upcoming Johto Festival and meet Cory, a Pokemon breeder. Brock helps him improve his Pokemon food recipe. During the Johto Pokemon exhibit, Don has a battle with Lyra, wins, and gets a Pokemon egg as a prize. The egg hatches into a Cyndaquil, and the group forms new friendships as Lyra and Cory decide to join them on their Sinnoh journey. However, Cyndaquil and Piplup are not getting along. To understand Cyndaquil better, Ash proposes a battle and sends Grottle against it, but Brock intervenes as it is Cyndaquil's first battle. After semantics, the group continues with Lyra and Cory. While at a Pokemon Center, a wild Gibble is causing trouble by attacking other Pokemon. Ash, Don, Lyra, and Cory decide to capture it. Amidst the chaos, Lyra playfully suggests that Cory and Don make a good couple, causing some tension. Eventually, Cory successfully captures Gibble. The group reflects on their experiences, and Cory and Lyra express their intention to join Don in the upcoming Lilypad Town contest. Because Jessie is sick, James takes her place in disguise and advances to the final round, where he faces Don. Don chooses Mamoswine for battles, but it ignores commands, leading to a defeat. Despite the disappointment, Don remains positive and determined to win her last ribbon. Team Rocket is relieved, and Jessie vows to earn more ribbons, sparing James from her wrath. In Lilypad Town, the heroes visit a coliseum where they make wishes upon touching statues of Dialga and Palkia. After an encounter with Team Rocket, Ash and Dawn face Lyra and Cory. Despite Ash and Dawn's victory, Cory and Lyra decide to travel together to Johto, bidding farewell to the Sinnoh heroes. The heroes come across Meowth, injured from a clash with Team Galactic, leading them to Fuego Ironworks. Meowth reveals Team Galactic's plans, and the group, determined to help Looker, sneaks into the factory. Inside, they face Jupiter and her Skuntank. A battle ensues, but the heroes emerge victorious. Jupiter escapes with Skuntank, leaving the heroes to search for Looker, Jesse, and James. Meanwhile, Cyrus plans to locate the lake trio of Zelf, Yuxi, and Mesprit, reaching out to Hunter J for assistance. As the heroes rescue Looker, they discover a mysterious gem, and Looker vows to continue opposing Team Galactic. As Ash, Dawn, and Brock dream of the lake trio being consumed by shadows, they wake up to learn that Jay, representing Team Galactic, has launched a bomb to capture a Zelf. Despite efforts by Gary and Team Rocket to stop her, Jay succeeds capturing a Zelf and causing pain to Ash, who shares a psychic connection with the Lake Trio. Following this, Yuxi and Mesprit attempt to rescue a Zelf but end up getting captured as well. 
Cyrus revealed as the mastermind behind Team Galactic reveals himself at their headquarters, where the trio is surrounded by Galactic Runts. Despite the hero's defiance, Cyrus insists they are crucial to their plans for their new world. The heroes, along with Team Rocket and Looker, infiltrate Team Galactic's headquarters at Mount Coronet. Cynthia arrives to aid them and they manage to free the imprisoned Lake Trio. However, Cyrus successfully uses the Red Chain to summon Dialga and Palkia and attempts to reshape the world to his vision. With the Lake Trio's help, the heroes successfully break the chains binding Dialga and Palkia, ultimately preventing the destruction of the Old World and the creation of Cyrus's envisioned one. The Lake Trio, having fulfilled their purpose, disappears and Dialga and Palkia return to their respective dimensions. Team Galactic is defeated and the Sinnoh region is saved thanks to the heroic efforts of Ash, Don, Brock, and their Pokemon, along with the unexpected assistance of Team Rocket and Looker. The heroes encounter the air battle master McCann and his granddaughter Maya, who engages in occasional battles with him. Ash challenges McCann to an air battle, sending Gliscor against McCann's Sizer. Ash challenges McCann to an air battle, sending Gliscor against McCann's Scizor. Despite Gliscor's initial struggle, it undergoes special training to understand the wind, ultimately showcasing improvement. During a rematch, Gliscor learns Giga Impact and demonstrates its progress, although it falls short against Scizor. Touched by Gliscor's determination, Ash decides to leave it with McCann for further training, exchanging heartfelt goodbyes. The heroes go to a contest and Zoe wins her last ribbon. Candace, the gym leader from Snowpoint City, shows up and surprises them. After celebrating, Don says she wants to join a double performance contest in Daybreak Town. Candace helps her and organizes a practice. At the same time, Paul gets his 8th badge and Ash promises to catch up because he's inspired by their competition. Ash also gets his hands on a Gibble, which might not be his strongest Pokemon, but it was still worth mentioning. And now it's time for the final act, Pokemon DP Sinnoh League. The friends meet Clayton, a skilled trainer and martial artist, along with his Mr. Mime. Clayton challenges Ash to a battle and Buizel loses. Wanting to get better, Ash and Buizel train with Clayton to perfect the Ice Punch move. In the rematch, Buizel shows off its improved speed in the rain, dodging Mr. Mime's attacks and finally winning with a perfect Ice Punch. Clayton is impressed by the progress, recognizing their potential, and he looks forward to a rematch in the future. As the Daybreak Town contest begins, Don is scared of Plusle and Minin from a past experience. She overcomes her fear with help from Ash and Brock and puts on an amazing show with bubbles, spins, and sparkles. Ursula follows with an exciting performance using Gabite and Jigglypuff. Both coordinators move on to the next round, getting ready for a big showdown with their final ribbon on the line. After winning their battles, Don and Ursula get ready for their last face-off. During the battle, Don skillfully uses the Flame Ice combo, ensuring her victory and getting the last ribbon required for the Grand Festival. Even though Ursula is upset, Don happily acknowledges her achievement and looks forward to the next challenge. Ash also learns that Barry has already obtained his 8th badge from Sunny Shore Gym, meaning he will have to hurry to Sunny Shore City for a challenging gym battle. Also, due to a surprise attack by Team Rocket, Monferno evolves into Infernape. When Ash gets to Sunny Shore City, he's excited to have a gym battle with Volkner, who people say is the strongest gym leader in Sinnoh. But Volkner has lost interest in battling and seems uninspired. Flint, who's friends with Volkner and a member of the Elite Four, steps into battle with Ash instead. Even though Ash loses, his determination makes Volkner see the value of being a gym leader. This sets the scene for Ash's last gym battle in Sunny Shore City. The battle starts, but is interrupted by a power outage, and of course, Team Rocket is behind it. During the struggle to stop them, Grottle evolves into Torterra and Volkner promises a rematch some other time. The group heads to Lake Valor for Dawn's Grand Festival, leaving Sunny Shore City in need of repairs. A boy named Roland gets tricked by Team Rocket's Pokemon Daycare scam and loses his Magby. Elite Four member Bertha steps in to help and teams up with the heroes to rescue Magby. Team Rocket tries using an armored suit on their Pokemon, but Bertha's natural approach wins and the bad guys are beaten. Grateful for the help, Bertha agrees to have a battle with Ash, sharing valuable advice on observation and strategy. The heroes go to Arrowroot Town, where Princess Salvia looks a lot like Dawn. The heroes go to Arrowroot Town, where Princess Salvia looks a lot like Dawn. Salvia wants to join a contest but has royal duties, so Dawn takes her place by swapping clothes. Salvia's Togekiss does really well, making it to the final round against Jessie. Even though Jessie tries hard, Salvia wins and gives her last ribbon to Jessie, letting her enter the Grand Festival. Jessie becomes thankful and nicer to Salvia. The real Dawn is tired from royal duties, but Salvia enjoys the experience. 
As a goodbye present, Salvia asks Don to take Togekiss with her, and the heroes continue their journey. Don, Ash, and Brock join a meal with others before the Grand Festival. Don meets fellow competitors Nando, Kenny, Zoe, and Ursula. In the appeal round, the contestants show off impressive performances. Ursula evolves her Eevee into Flareon and Vaporeon. In the end, Don, Ursula, Jessalina, Nando, and Zoe move on to the next round, but Kenny doesn't make it. Kenny wishes Don luck against Ursula and says goodbye to train for the next Grand Festival. Don defeats Ursula in the Grand Festival battle with a clever strategy using Pachirisu and Mamoswine. Even though Ursula doubts it and says it's luck, Don's skill is clear. Don thanks her Pokemon for their effort. Ash and Brock offer their congratulations and encouragement as Don prepares for the upcoming challenges in the Grand Festival. In the semifinals of the Grand Festival, Jessie, using James Carnivine and Mime Jr., wows the crowd with her skills but loses to Don. Zoe has a tough battle against Nando, showcasing their Pokemon's elegant moves. Zoe wins, setting up the final match against Don. Before the battle, Jessie looks determined and asks Don to promise to become a top coordinator. Honestly, that was such a sweet moment, I almost cried the first time I watched it. The next day, the big showdown between Zoe and Don starts, with the Grand Festival trophy and the title of top coordinator at stake. In the final battle of the Grand Festival, Don goes up against Zoe using Togekiss and Piplup against Glammeow and Gallade. It's an intense match with impressive combinations and strategies from both trainers. Despite Don's strong effort, Zoe wins and becomes the top coordinator. Don graciously congratulates Zoe, and as they go their separate ways, Jessie, upset that Don didn't keep her promise, decides to focus on capturing Pikachu again. Even though Don lost, she reflects on the meaningful experiences, earned ribbons, and friends she made during her journey. Ash is excited about his upcoming gym battle with Volkner and is ready for new challenges on the way to the Sinnoh League. And now, it's time for Ash's final gym battle. At the Sunny Shore Gym, Ash battles against Volkner in a strong Electric-type Pokemon. Electivire has a special ability called Motor Drive that helps it dodge Pikachu's electric attacks. But Pikachu uses smart strategies to beat Electivire. Volkner's main Pokemon, Jolteon, loses to Ash's Infernape. Luxray is tough and defeats Pikachu, almost beating Infernape too. Right when Luxray is about to finish Infernape, something special called Blaze happens, and Infernape shoots out a powerful flamethrower. Ash, trusting Infernape, controls its power and Infernape wins. Ash gets the Beacon Badge, finishing his Sinnoh Gym journey. Volkner tells them about the Sinnoh League on Lily of the Valley Island, where they'll set sail for new challenges in a month. The heroes miss the ferry for the day and encounter some familiar faces such as Jasmine and Flint, one of whom, Kenny, is in love with Don. Before departing, Don leaves a note for Kenny, expressing her support for Ash and her dream of becoming a top coordinator. She also promises to meet Kenny again as they pursue their dreams, which is very sweet of her, but I also kind of feel sad for my boy Kenny. All in all, this is one of the more emotionally driven episodes as our heroes head to their final destination in the Sinnoh region. Ash, Brock, and Don arrive at Lily of the Valley Island for the Sinnoh League and find out that Ash's Pokemon were let go by mistake. While looking for them, they meet old friends like Corfish, Totodile, Bayleaf, and the playful Cyndaquil. Team Rocket tries to catch Cyndaquil, but that causes Cyndaquil to evolve into Quilava. After the heroes find all of Ash's Pokemon, they go to the League's opening ceremony. Professor Oak accidentally sends Snorlax instead of Heracross, creating some funny chaos. The matchups for the League are revealed, and Ash is set to battle Nando in the first round, getting ready for an exciting start to the Sinnoh League battles. In the Sinnoh League, Ash has a tough battle against Nando but ultimately wins. Even though Nando loses, he has no regrets and says goodbye to the group as he continues his journey. The heroes also find out that a strong trainer with a Darkrai has joined the competition and this is the part where I lost my mind anticipating Ash facing off against Darkrai. Barry has a tough battle against Paul and despite putting up a strong fight, Paul proves to be too powerful. Barry, even after losing, stays determined and says he wants to battle Paul again in the future. In the next battle against Conway, Ash is determined and ready even though Conway uses some mysterious strategies. Before facing Conway, Ash practices with Brock. During the practice, Infernape learns Flare Blitz and defeats Suda Wudo, but Barry and Brock warn Ash about the damage Infernape might take from using Flare Blitz. The battle with Conway starts and at one point it looks like Ash might lose. Despite the challenges, Gibble impressively wins the battle with its newly mastered Draco Meteor. Ash moves on to battle Paul in a 6-on-6 six -six showdown, setting the stage for a long-awaited showdown between the two rivals. 
Before Ash battles Paul, he shows off Gliscor's powerful Giga Impact move against Don's Mamoswine. Barry is excited, but Brock reminds him that the move has drawbacks. Paul talks to his brother Reggie, who tells Paul not to underestimate Ash and hopes he wins the league. Honestly, no amount of words can really give you the feel of this battle, so once again, I recommend you watch it for yourself. End result is that Ash wins the battle against Paul, and it's a tough victory with Infernape showing new strength and determination. Despite their strong rivalry and different beliefs, Ash and Paul develop a mutual respect. Paul sees Ash's growth and strength, and Ash learns valuable lessons from Paul. With this win, Ash moves forward in the Sinnoh League, but there's a tough challenge ahead in the form of Tobias, the trainer with Darkrai. As Paul leaves, they promise to have a rematch in the future, showing how their bond is changing. The friends around them see the importance of this moment and look forward to more encounters between Ash and Paul on their paths to becoming Pokemon Masters. In the Sinnoh League semifinals, Ash faces Tobias in his very strong Darkrai. Despite trying hard, Ash loses many of his Pokemon because Darkrai is too powerful. Finally, his Sceptile defeats Darkrai, but by then, most of Ash's Pokemon are either knocked out or too tired. Pikachu fights bravely, but in the end, both Tobias's Latios and Pikachu lose. Tobias moves on to the finals. Even though Ash lost, he stays determined to become a Pokemon master, and his friends also talk about their dreams for the future. The journey might be tough, but Ash, Don, and their friends keep working toward their goals in the Pokemon world. After the Sinnoh League, Ash and his friends sail to Don's hometown, Twinleaf. They encounter a Tentacruel attack, and some Pokemon on their boat get poisoned. Since they don't have any antidotes, Brock uses berries as an improvised solution. Later, Nurse Joy arrives and heals all the Pokemon. She's impressed by Brock's care and suggests that he could become a Pokemon doctor. The group meets up with Don's mom at the Twinleaf port, thinking about where their future journeys might take them. Back in Twinleaf Town, Ash and his friends get ready to go their separate ways. Don is thinking about traveling to Kanto, and Brock is considering becoming a Pokemon doctor. Team Rocket shows up with a plan to capture Pikachu, Piplup, and Togekiss. A battle happens and it ends with a fantastic attack from Pikachu and Piplup, sending Team Rocket blasting off. As the group says goodbye, Don looks back on their journey, sharing emotional farewells. Ash and Brock start new journeys, leaving Sinnoh behind. The scene changes to Ash running towards Pallet Town, marking the end of their Sinnoh adventure and the start of new adventures ahead. So that will be it from us. If you enjoyed the video, then leave us a like and subscribe to our channel for similar content. Thanks for watching, we'll see you at the next one.